Well, Minor White was interested in uh, Buddhism, in Zen Buddhism. Uh, one of the books that we were reading at the time was called Zen and the Art of Archery. Uh, he was interested in mysticism. He was reading Evelyn uh, Underhill's book on mysticism. He was interested in Chinese and Japanese ink painting. So he was drawing from a, a number of sources. And then after uh, I returned to California in 1956, some point, I mean, I can't give you an exact date, but he began to get interested in the Gurdjieff movement and the ideas of Gurdjieff. When looking at an image, one usually does not use the body. It's usually intellect, maybe it strikes an emotion. But Minor in the workshops would sometimes have you dance your reaction to a photograph, not to verbalize it, but to move, or even give a back rub to the person in front of you after sitting with an image taking it in and responding through touch. All of these were some very difficult for individuals, but I believe it had to do with his understanding through his searching that there needed to be a combination of the mind, the body, and the emotions, the spirit. There were many things that I learned uh, from him. Uh, one of them was the idea of concentration, uh, which was simply uh, the, a technique for relaxing one's body, relaxing one's mind, and then engaging a photograph in depth. And this was something that was very important to me. The way it worked was that you would sit when he was teaching this process, you would sit, look at a photograph, usually starting with your eyes closed, oftentimes the projected image on the wall, and then you would go through the process of relaxing the body, relaxing behind the eyes, letting the relaxation drift down through the body, and then um, the relaxation was to be both muscles and also your emotions and your entire physical being uh, was, was to, you know, come into a state of relaxation. Fascinating for me was watching Minor sequence images. He would lay them out on the floor. He would always bend over at right angles, looking down at the images, would space, and even uh, exhibitions of other artists, when he would go to hang them in a wall and you would expect them to be evenly spaced down a wall, he would start spacing and, and talk about how it needs to have a pause. There needs to be a space, there needs to be a breath here before we continue. So you could have a set of four images and a slightly larger space and then another two, and then a space, and then he would continue on with the show. And he would give one a breathing room. He always felt that the images determined what the spacing needed to be. All, the way of looking at this would be that if you are in that state of concentration, then you can apply it in, in other ways. In other words, I, I de, uh, described it in terms of looking at a single photograph. All right? And then what Miner would do is project that forward into making photographs to get into this state, this condition, when you're in the field and you're walking, you know, and you're looking, and the, and the quality of your looking, the quality of your vision, and being quiet with yourself, et cetera. So uh, that, was, uh, that was the approach that Miner was teaching. Then in terms of looking at a sequence, it's simply getting into that state and moving from one image to the other and understanding that the images are related to each other. You see a form in one, 
and then it may be transformed or rotated or moved in some way or changed tonality in the second image. And then you can begin to enter the sequence itself with that, you know, in that state of consciousness. I believe to have a creative audience was what he was after all along. For him, it was on a spiritual quest, and he felt that by having an audience, by having people understand, maybe they would understand themselves more, maybe they'd understand him more. I don't want to suggest either. But he felt, I remember him saying distinctly, that if we were to continue photographing, and we didn't have a group of people around us that knew how to read images, in time, our creative energy would dry up. And in order to stay alive, we have to have an educated group around us, pull in different people, but have an educated group who know how to see, and then that will keep your energy and your creative life alive.